So shame on the media uh, that basically left the, you know, basically decided, oh, okay, the water, the state tells me the water's fine, which we're going to get to in a minute. The water's fine, so we could move on. Shame on them. But I want to read a piece from my Vice story that pertains to you, Melissa, because we broke this. We broke in the Vice story that Snyder's right-hand man, Richard Baird, when I say right-hand man, <laughs> residents of Flint knew, and he, and, and he identified himself as this, that if you were speaking with Richard Baird, you were speaking with Governor Snyder directly. Richard Baird had given Governor Snyder his first job out of college. Richard Baird had said, we're best friends. Richard Baird was known throughout Michigan as Snyder's quote unquote fixer. So anything Richard Baird was saying to residents was coming from Snyder. Let me read this part from the Vice story and then get your response, Melissa. I say Richard Baird because he's one of the people that was just announced is going to be charged as part of the Flint water crisis investigation. Uh, This is from the Vice story. According to Mays, Melissa Mays, who's with us now, Baird approached her in May 2018, not so subtly trying to pay her off. Quote, Rick and I are out at the end of the year, so we have nothing to lose, Mays recalled Baird saying. Baird allegedly said he was so tired of Flint residents complaining and lacking appreciation for all Snyder had done for them that he unilaterally, without the governor knowing, decided to end free water bottle sites throughout Flint. Mays told Vice she offered Baird to shower in her home as a demonstration of how unsafe the water still was. She also emphasized the need for transparent, non-state or EPA-funded water testing. Baird's response wasn't subtle, according to Mays. Quote, how about I do this? If I come in and replace your interior plumbing, your fixtures, the water heater, and your service line, would that make you happy and would that make you quiet? Melissa, can you tell my audience... What did he say when you responded that way? So what I responded with, I said, that sounds great, but only if you do it for the rest of the city, every single home. And that has been every offer or whatever that I have received over the years for my silence or just to be happy and pretend that the water is safe and fine. I have said the exact same thing. Test every single home for every single dangerous contaminant that could be harming us, not just lead and copper because bacteria has killed people. We have people with cancer because of these carcinogens coming through the shower, the hot water, the cold water, all of that stuff. And then I said, after you replace every single piece of plumbing from the water treatment plant through the streets, all the way up to every single tap and and every single appliance, everything in every single house, home, apartment, shack, shanty, whatever in Flint, then I'll think about saying the water's safe then and only then. You know, and uh, yeah, his face got red, he got mad, and that was the end of that. But what was funny is he did this in front of the state's attorneys, the uh, my attorneys, the NRDC and ACLU of Michigan, and because we were sitting there talking about water testing with a pipe replacement lawsuit. And I couldn't believe he said that out loud, but that's the thing. It has been so outright. For some people, it's been a little bit more you know, subtle, but not so much. And I mean, I was offered a free service line if I would, uh, you know, participate in the um, recall against former Karen, we our former mayor, Karen Weaver of Flint, who was standing up against the state. And so, no, I mean, it's been ridiculous. I'm like, I'm sorry, my soul's worth more than a service line. And plus the mains are garbage too anyway. So what good is that? You know, I mean, yes, we fought and won to get the service lines replaced, but that's only one piece. That's only a clean straw from a dirty main into the dirty plumbing in our house. It's corroded because of what the state decided to do to us and let happen. So, and Rich Baird has been at the front of all that. And the fact that he unilaterally pulled the water, the points of distribution, the sites, the pods, um, all on his own and bragged about it. And he also unilaterally was mad at former Karen Weaver for standing up, demanding more resources for Flint. And apparently this, you know, the governor, Governor Snyder said, get over it. I don't want to talk about Flint anymore. I don't want to talk about the water. Let's talk about businesses. And then, um, you know, and then she, she was a pain in their side. And so then Rich Baird took away the water bill credits because we were getting a certain percentage off because Snyder was like, well, you can still flush the toilets, can't you pay for that? And by the way, let's not forget that Flint pays the highest rates in the United States, six times the national average for water that is killing us and harming us and destroying our plumbing and, you know, our appliances and all this stuff. So I just want to ask you, because that's an important point. Every national media outlet for years, this is dating back to 2018, has reported, Politico actually just reported a piece saying, Flint's water is clean. Why won't the residents trust it? So I want to be clear. Every national outlet basically took 
when Snyder was still governor, the state's declaration that the water was clean, uh, myself and Jen, even though we knocked on nearly 500 doors in the summer and fall of 2018, we found that Snyder's environmental officials were literally going into residents' homes and running their water right before taking lead and copper tests, kind of illegal. Cheating, Actually, absolute cheating. Not, not kind of illegal, it is illegal. Always. More importantly, they not only were they going and doing it themselves, they were telling residents when you test, run the water right before taking it, what does that do? It lowers the lead levels and gives you a false lead reading. But the media, because the media is lazy and frankly doesn't give a damn, they just breathlessly reported Flint's water is now meeting EPA regulations. You are a resident. You are one of the leading activists. I've been to Flint many times, but you live there. Can you tell the audience, is Flint's water, excuse me, nearly seven years later, April is seven years, is Flint's water safe and clean? No. And what what blows my mind is that the media um, that was, you know, here during this whole big debacle blowing up in 2015, 16, when everything finally hit the news, uh, the state of Michigan was charged. Their de their Department of Environmental Quality was charged with cheating on the damn water test. So why do they now magically trust when the, the people that poisoned us say, oh, everything's fine. Our tests uh, show the water's fine. Who's stupid enough to believe that? Because the people in Flint don't. And we also know because we can smell our water. Today, I go to turn on my shower, smells like straight chemicals. And also all across the city of Flint, there's water mains breaking. And that means we're not getting enough chlorine, bacteria is allowed to grow. Nobody's giving us boil water advisories. And of course we have to filter our water before boiling because of the heavy metals that are being released. We have a lady that just tested with 300 parts per billion of lead still. And again, we fought to get the service lines replaced, but that is only one piece. And we all knew, we learned the hard way that if you are getting, and it could be God's perfect water being pumped through these corroded, damaged, destroyed pipes, that it's going to contaminate it. And again, the mains are a mess. The interior plumbing's a mess. So yes, the service line is one piece. And unfortunately, the only thing that's covered by the federal and state safe drinking water act. So it's the only thing we could sue for for that. But until we get the funding and money to be able to replace those mains and to replace the plumbing inside our house and get filtration systems, because there's zero way we can trust these people to ever give us clean water again. I mean, and they keep talking about trust, trust, trust. Well, they've lied to us continually. We keep finding out like little bits and pieces over the years. That, oh, guess what? We just found out last week that some company was allowed to dump toxic waste in the river while we were drinking it for years. And they just now told us, it's like, oh, cool. So I want to drink fracking waste and toxic waste on top of the, all the other chemicals and contaminants. Nobody's dumb enough to believe them anymore, but the media runs away saying, well, the state said it's fine. Well, of course you're going to take the abusers. Now? Yeah. Yeah. I'm the, I, I killed that guy, but no, I say it's fine. He's alive because I said so. That's not how this works. And it doesn't make our water any less toxic. People are still getting rashes, discolored water, horrible like, smelling water. I'd like to visually show my audience how safe this water is. Melissa, you've seen this, but I don't know if everyone else has. So with this, with this cooked testing data that, that Jen and I broke, we broke that they were basically cooking the data. They were cheating on the water test. With that data, Rick Snyder in, I believe, April 2000. Uh, was it yet yeah, April 2018 while he was still governor he declared the water's fine the water's quote unquote restored and as a result he shut down the remaining water stations they called it the water pods that desperate residents depended on for free water uh Flint's majority black uh a lot of people don't even have transportation uh a lot of white poor whites they depended on this free bottled water because they don't have money to go buy gallons and gallons of bottled water. Well, I want to show you when we were on the ground, Jen and I, with status quo's support, with status quo members supporting us, we spoke with a young black woman. Her name was Jasmine, who had her one-year-old infant sitting on her lap. Jasmine and her boyfriend and her two kids had just moved in to this home on Wolcott Avenue in Flint. They just moved in in May, 2018. That was one month after Rick Snyder declared the water is fine. When they moved in, her one-year-old infant, her skin was clear as a day. Beautiful young, beautiful one-year-old baby, clear skin. I wanna show you this short clip from this interview. 
and then it just left that mark. So like, that was from she, her hand. You know, that stuff that was right here, the stuff right here was all over her face. Her, her ears even had tore up in the inside real bad on both sides. Man, it looks like a mix of blisters and... And I act, she actually was peeling them, so... So that's just one case. That's just one case. They, that woman who just moved into that house in May of 2018, a month after Governor Rick Snyder declared the water fine based on the manipulated data that his environmental department manipulated that we broke. By the way, we were supposed to break that for Newsweek. They killed the story at the last minute, citing we didn't have enough data. We knocked on 450 doors. They killed the story. We didn't have enough data. We had dozens of Flint residents on the record, audio and video saying, yeah, they, they either told us to run the water or they came in and did it themselves. We had one woman, 35 years old, no health problems before, Amanda. They came in, they ran her water for a minute. They said, oh, you have no lead. She has thyroid cancer now kidney problems. They told her no lead in her house. So she went back to drinking that water without a filter, by the way. So Melissa, that's not the only person you've ever seen recently with rashes, whose hair, who's losing their hair, who eyes burn, your eyes burn in the shower, you've told me. You saw that video before, but can you tell me how is the water restored if a one-year-old baby just moved into that home and has white blisters all over her arms and legs. As long as the damage destroyed infrastructure and appliances, fixtures are, are still in place, there is no magic chemical that you can go in that was going to replace and repair the damage. They talked about putting orthophosphates in to recoat the pipes. You can't recoat holes. And guess what? We find out a year later after they dumped like four times the normal limit of this chemical in our water, they found out it wasn't sticking to the pipes anyway, and it didn't work, and that they were naive at the time to think it would work. The only thing that can work is just to replace the broken things. But the state has gone out of their way to not do it because if they have to fix Flint, then they're gonna have to fix all the other poison cities. Like, uh, yeah, isn't that what we pay our taxes for you to do? Oh, no, excuse me, it goes to the military and tax breaks for the wealthy. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you could sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to $10 a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you. Oh,